generations to come. Thank you for your ministry, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. As believers, as Christians, as children of God, I'm sure that uh, you give a lot of thought to the Lord Jesus Christ about Jesus. You know, you uh, study the things about the Lord Jesus Christ. You read in the Word of God about the Lord Jesus Christ. You uh, consider him. You, I'm sure, meditate on him and the things that he did and the quality of his life, the characteristics of his life, which is so many outstanding characteristics. It's really endless. It's inexhaustible, uh, the uh, quality of uh, Jesus' life, and in particular when he walked here on this earth and still is. But I think about uh, the outstanding qualities of his life in this earth, and I also think about how Jesus was committed. You know, a lot of, lot of qualities, faithfulness, loyal, loving, pure, sincere, genuine, so many outstanding qualities. But I think about commitment, how Jesus was committed. Jesus was committed to his mission. He was committed to the purpose, the plan that was outlined for his life from the Father. Jesus was committed to humanity. And of course, he was committed to the Father. Jesus was committed to the Father. And so, sometimes uh, in our uh, today's society, uh, we think about that word commitment, and uh, some, 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 I think, think that it's old-fashioned or it's outdated, the word commitment. But we understand that it does not get old. Commitment does not get old. Commitment does not uh, have any time boundaries. Commitment is something that Jesus, think about it. If Jesus Christ had not been committed as he was, we would not be here today redeemed, saved, and heaven bound. It was because of his commitment. And, and, and Jesus, uh, he never backed away from uh, what he was in this earth for and what he committed himself to uh, where the Father was concerned. And we know that, that God has uh, irreversibly committed himself uh, to humanity and, and to the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, the word of God uh, says there in Deuteronomy 7, it, it says, therefore... Know that your God, say my God. my God, know that your God, he is God. Yes, he is. And then it goes on to say, the faithful God, yes. the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy to a thousand generations right. to those who love him and keep his commandment. Amen. Now then, we said that to those who love him and keep his commandment. That's us, Amen. the people of God. Amen. How many love God here this morning? Amen. Amen. And I know that you do. And I know that uh, where this uh, commitment uh, thing is concerned, you know, sometimes uh, it, it's taken for granted. Sometimes uh, it, it's not uh, considered at all. Sometimes people uh, just completely eliminate it from their life in today's society. You consider, you know, uh, the marriage union. You consider uh, the family unit. You consider our government. No, don't consider them. We know they're not committed. And you consider... <laughs> No, but you, 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 you think about these things and you, and you attach that word commitment to it. And we understand that, you know, without commitment. Listen, the Bible says uh, this in the book of Hebrews, right? Hebrews 6, 12. It says, do not be sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Amen. Now, through faith and patience, they inherited the promise. 
But we got to understand something. That without commitment, you're not going to hang around long enough to have faith. You're not going to hang around long enough to be patient. Because you have to be committed in order to be patient. If you're not committed, uh, my goodness. If you're not committed, and I know I'm not talking to you, uh, I'm talking about the way society is today. If you're not committed to the word of God, if you're not committed to the promises of God, if you're not committed, you're not going to, uh, you know, believe God where uh, tithing is concerned, when you have other financial obligations that say, well, no, 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 you take care of me first or else. You, you don't tithe. You don't give, you take care of me. If you're not committed, you're subject to be uh, persuaded by those other obligations that are screaming in your, in your ear, saying, me first. Yeah. No, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first God's way of doing, right? Amen. So commitment says that, you know, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of how things are going, I'm going, I'm committed to God's word. I'm committed to God's promise. I'm committed to hanging in there and doing what, doing it God's way. Therefore, I will reap the benefits of his promises. Because if we're not committed, we're not going to hang around, you know, when, uh, where sickness is concerned, when it's, uh, you know, screaming at our, the symptoms are screaming in our bodies, right? The symptoms are there. And the word is saying, by his stripes you are healed. Got to be committed to what the word says about healing. Because um, uh, we know that faith and patience is vital. Without faith, we can't, without faith, we can't please God, right? right? So that's vital. But we have to be committed in order to get to exercising, effectively ex exercising our faith and being patient. Because you cannot, you cannot uh, effectively operate in faith and be patient without being committed. Are y'all here? I thought you were. This is early for me. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just waking up or something, right? But no, no, commitment is, is absolutely important. And, and, and so, you know, uh, the, the whole thing about uh, commitment is people uh, seem to be backing away from it. I, I said a few minutes ago, uh, you know, where uh, the government is concerned or, 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 or other things that are not, not holding to commitment. Maybe it's just that I'm from the old school. And commitment means much because uh, commitment means that you uh, uh, see the, uh, the uh, reality <laughs> of what you believe in God for. Amen. Did y'all hear me? Because if you're not committed to the word of God, you're not going to realize the promises of God. Got to be committed. Committed. And there's a, there's a lack of, of a commitment um, even in the uh, church. Oh, I hope that wasn't painful. I heard somebody say, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. There's a lack of commitment in the church, you know. You know, believers sometimes, uh, because things don't quite work out the way that they would like it to work out, you know, they go uh, to this church and, and that church, and, 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 and because, you know, things don't work out at that church, then they go to this church and that church, and eventually, you know, they are not in any church. They're watching church on, on uh, TV, you know, and, and, and then, uh, you know, after a while, you know, because of the commitment is waning, uh, they're not even watching Christian TV anymore. They're just watching TV. Commitment. No, if I'm committed, Minister Floyd said a few minutes ago, he said that at six years old, right, 
he got saved. He said he looked out <laughs> among himself. Y'all, y'all know that scripture, right? He looked out, right? And he saw how people were acting. And he said he missed all of that, and he accepted the Lord at six years old, and he committed at six years old. Yeah, well, we see where he is today, don't we? So commitment does not get old, and it doesn't matter how old you are to commit. So, so, so Jesus was committed. My goodness. When you go the route that Jesus went, and y'all know he tells us to take up his cross, right? Y'all hear? He tells us to take up his cross. But Jesus committed his life, his time in this earth to humanity. And he went on the cross, boom. He was crucified. He suffered. He died. But listen, just before Jesus died, this is what he said. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I commit my spirit. And so Jesus, uh, he, <laughs> let me give you a definition to commit, all right? Would y'all like a definition to commit? Huh? Are y'all here? Come on now. I know it's early for me, but y'all, y'all come here at 8 o'clock every Sunday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Commit. So I looked up the word commit in uh, 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 dictionary.com. It says to bind or obligate as by pledge or assurance. To bind or obligate as by pledge or assurance. It means pledge. It means to commit oneself to a promise, to be committed to a course of action. To be committed to a course of action. So Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it this way. To carry through as a process to completion, to carry through as a process to completion. And another definition Merriam-Webster gives is an agreement or pledge to do something in the future. An agreement or pledge to do something in the future. So Ecclesiastes 5.5 5 says this, says it's better not to say anything than make a promise and not keep it. Just, (laughs) in other words, he said, look, keep your mouth closed until you have had a heart check. Because if you have not had a heart check on this, don't make a promise where God is concerned. And and commitment starts in the heart. I said commitment is a heart action. Because we can say a lot of things. I say this, of course, you know, I minister in the, uh, the prison system, right? Yeah. And I say this to, uh, to, to, to the guys many times. I say that when you say something to God, when you make a promise to God, when you make a vow to God, you always ensure that your heart is attached to what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. Because God is always looking upon the heart. You can fool a lot of people, but you can't fool God. Um, That's what I tell the people in the prison. I'm not talking to y'all that way. No, we can fool a lot of people, but we can't fool God. God knows exactly where we're coming from. God knows exactly where we are. God knows exactly where we're going. God knows exactly what we're going to do at all times. And God treats commitment and requires it of us as much as he's committed. Because we're children of God. Look, we're born out of God. So God expects the same from us as he is. Right? So if you would turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. 
And we're going to read uh, verse 12. Reading from the New King James Version, it says this. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Actually, we could uh, put our name in this passage, right? So we could say it this way. Therefore, Darnell, what does the Lord your God require of you? Right? And so put your name in there. Therefore, what's your name? Say it. Boy, that was confusing. No. <laughs> So, so what does the Lord, in, 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 in essence, what God is saying here is to make this commitment, make this commitment, keep this commitment, and follow through. What does the Lord your God require of you? Well, he has spelled it out. And God is simply saying that he wants us to commit to him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our might. And see it through. I said, see it through. Because God has not changed his mind about what he requires of us. I know that there are a lot of uh, things that can, uh, you know, come up in life that can be distracting. And a lot of things that can happen in life. You know, but what we do is we look to God in the first Corinthians 12, 9 uh, says this. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Look, it's the grace of God that is always going to get us through. Amen. So regardless of what we are confronted with in life, we look to him and his grace. Because that grace is going to carry us when everything else fails. That grace got us into this kingdom. And it has not Changed. God has not withdrawn his grace. Amen. So when we make commitments to God, we look to his grace to carry us through. Amen. And we can, we can uh, keep our commitments and we can follow through with our commitments. Yes. Turn, if you would, to uh, the book of Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Of course, I think of the Lord Jesus Christ where commitment is concerned but Abraham is a pretty good example as well. Genesis 12, verse 1. I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. It says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to all. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when, when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran and headed to, uh, headed for the land of Canaan. When he arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the Oak of Morai. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Verse 7, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give you this land. I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord, who had appeared to him. Now I want to read verses 1 through 3 from the Amplified Bible. So listen up. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, go for yourself for your own advantage away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you abundant with abundant increase of favor and make your name famous and distinguished. 
and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. Verse 3, and I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you, and curse him who curse or use insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. Now, we look at this passage about Abram. And the Lord gave Abram instructions here. But what we did not read uh, is uh, chapter 11, the end of chapter 11, uh, verses 31 and 32. In uh, verses 31, the Bible says that uh, Terah, who was Abram's father, he took his family, right? And it actually said that he uh, was taking them to Canaan. But if you notice in that study, you find out that Terah, the Bible says that he settled in Haran. He settled in Haran. And, and some translations said that he dwelt in Haran. So we don't know, uh, you know, whether God had actually told Terah to uh, travel to Canaan or not. The Bible says that that's where he was headed. We don't know if God told him uh, to go there or not. But what we do know is that Abram, he was told to go to Canaan, and Abram followed through, and he got there. Now, I was thinking about this when I was uh, studying it, right, uh, where Terah, Abram's father, is concerned. And it says that he uh, settled in Haran. Now, when you, when you read it, it also says that Haran died before Terah, Haran being uh, 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 Terah's son as well, right? And he died. So he died at an early age. And the Bible says here that, that Terah was headed to Canaan, but he settled in Haran, right? right? So I, con I consider that. So if we can use congestion, conjecture here, right? And consider the fact that Haran died before his father, and in that death that Haran uh, took on grief, and he took on a mourning that he did not get past. Right. And because he took this on, the Bible says that he settled there. He dwelt there in that grief. And so you consider uh, the commitment, right? Again, we don't know, according to the Bible, whether God had told him to go there or not, but we do know that that's where the Bible said he was headed, to Canaan. So I want to say this, and that is, uh, as I said a few minutes ago, that it's the grace of God that gets us to the place, to the destination that God uh, intends for us to be or that we commit to God it's his grace. So when we have uh, different things to happen in our life, whether it's some tragedy, whether it's some death, whether it's some whatever it might be, it's the grace of God that's going to get you there. And you got to understand that we don't want to settle in that place of uh, that damage. We don't want to settle in that place of wounds. We don't want to settle in that place of scars. We don't want to settle in that place of death. We don't want to settle in that place of grief. We don't want to settle in that place. We do not want to dwell there. There's still a commitment. There's still a promise. There's still a place that God wants you to go. There's still a place that God is committed to getting you to. So we commit to him and we, we follow through with that commitment. And as we follow through with the commitment that God has committed to us, he will get us to that destination. God is faithful to get you there. He's faithful to get you there. So do not settle. Amen. Don't dwell. Amen. Look, Life is about injuries. Amen. Don't settle there. God is stronger. He's greater. He will get you there. So, so, so Tara, the father, the father, Masikina, Makalini, of Haran, of Abram, of Nahor. He was headed to a land that God said would be a blossom. And I love, I love uh, 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 the way Abraham, 
Abram at the time, the way he handled this, because God told him to go to a land that I will show you. In other words, he didn't know, have any idea where he was going. But he committed to what God had instructed him to do. And the Bible says that he got there. Abraham, he was quite interesting because, yes, uh, he had some uh, leadership errors in his, during his life. But who doesn't have some errors, mistakes in their life? We all do, right? But he was so interesting. He was interesting because uh, he, regardless of the errors that he may have had in his life, he always found a way to follow through with the commitment. So when God told him to go to a place that he knew nothing about, he went the distance. He was committed to obey God. When, 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 when Lot, his nephew, who uh, he took with him, the enemy, enemies actually abducted uh, 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 Lot, and his family, his goods, and the Bible says there uh, 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 in uh, Genesis 17 that, that Abram, Abraham, he pursued the enemy. He overtook the enemy. He recovered all from the enemy. Abraham was committed to his family. And when God told, told uh, Abraham, this is what I want you to do, there in Genesis 17, he said, I want you to circumcise every male in your camp. Now, he was committed. You got to understand something, that the males in his camp, if not all, most of them were adults. Now, now the, 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 the custom the custom, the Hebrew custom, was that when a, when a child was eight days old, they were to be circumcised, right? Well, a baby, a baby don't have uh, much of a, a resistance. But an adult man, that's the potential for a lot of pushback. <laughs> and the Bible says that every one of them was circumcised. Abraham was committed. Amen. And I would go on to say that those men who followed him in his household were committed too because, you know, to be uh, circumcised as an adult, my goodness. And I don't know of any, I don't know of any anesthesiologist that was around in that day. I don't know of any. Y'all may know, but I don't know of any, right? And so, and so that's commitment, Right? But even greater than that, even greater than that, when God instructed Abraham to take his only beloved son, Isaac, and God says, I want you to sacrifice that kid, right? And Abraham headed up the mountain with Isaac. My understanding is that he was about 12 years old, Isaac. And Abraham laid him on this altar. And the Bible says that he was about to thrust. This is the only son. Now, this is the son of promise, right? The only one. <laughs> and he's about to sacrifice this child. And only by a last second intervention, angelic intervention, that Abraham did not do that. But in Abraham's mind and in Abraham's heart, it was a done, done deal. Why? Because he was committed. He was committed. And, 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 and Abraham, God called him the father of faith, but listen, my friend. My friend. And so listen, there are those that God call his children, and there are those that God call my friend. Abraham was committed. And so we, we look at the story, we look at the story there in um, uh, uh, John, the Gospel of John 6, 
When you read six, uh, 63, uh, or verse 60 through 67, right? And so Jesus, Jesus is uh, talking to uh, the disciples, and he tells them uh, that, that you are to drink of my blood and partake of my body. And in verse 60 of John 60, uh, uh, John 6, the Bible says that uh, many of them at that point says, this is a hard saying here. This is pretty hard, Jesus. Now, these are his disciples, right? This is hard. And so the Bible says that Jesus then went on to say to the um, uh, disciples, does this, does this offend you? What I just said, does it offend you? And, and then it says later on in the passage that many of them backed away and never walked with him again. Why? Lack of commitment. Lack of commitment. So commitment is a heart thing. That's where it takes place first. And because it's a hard thing, you see, if, uh, if you uh, do things out of your head, you know, then uh, many times uh, it becomes easy to be diverted away from you, what you've said out of your head. Amen. But when there is a, a, a heart check, I'll just say it becomes a lot less easier to back off from it. Y'all ever heard the old saying that it's not the size of the dog that's in the fight. It's the size of the fight that's in the dog. What is that talking about? The size of his heart. Right? And so God is always looking upon our hearts. And there are many times that, uh, as Jesus said there in, in uh, go the Gospel of John 6, are you offended in this? Many times offense can cause us to back off, to back off uh, the things that we've said to one another, to back off the things that we've said to God, to back off the things that uh, we've said to family members, the things, it, it can cause us to back off offense. And the enemy uses offense to get you away from what God, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Offense. And so people uh, in the church, in the church, people sometimes, they get offended for little things, or, you know, trivial things, which don't mean a thing, really, when you, when you really consider it. And if you ask the Holy Spirit, he'll let you know, that ain't nothing. What are you talking about? What are you, what are you, why are you acting like that? And, 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 and so we, we take on offense, and, and then, you know, where the church is concerned, come on, I'm not stepping on anybody's foot, am I? This is what we do in the church. We were sitting on the front row. You know, we were getting it all, Right? And then, you know, uh, 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 Sister Nancy, uh, Brother Thomas, he uh, offended me. So now I'm back and back. And look, many times they may not even know that they offended you. <laughs> That's so interesting. And then you, we start to back off, you know. We sit a little further back in the, uh, the pews until we're out the door. Right? Hey, it's a ploy of the enemy. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 28, it says that the, there's God who sets you in your place. In the local church, it's God who sets you there. 
And if God set you there, there, don't you know the devil going to do everything within his power to get you out of where God has set you? Amen. Paul said we're not to be ignorant of how the devil works. Everybody say, I'm not ignorant. So, so God is wanting us to reinforce our commitment. God is wanting us uh, to realign, if we've gotten out of alignment, realign our hearts and our commitment toward him. You know, uh, uh, on, on a vehicle, if a, if a vehicle is uh, uh, front end is out of alignment, right, it's a rough ride. But then you go and you get that alignment, and it just smooth things out. There are some Christians who need to be have a front end alignment. I think I will. There are some Christians who need to have a front alignment. Amen. And listen, it's for our good. Right. right? It's for our good. Let me just read this verse uh, to you again, and then we'll close, right? Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, and now, Darnell, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul, in all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today, and then he says, for your good, Amen. for your good, Amen. you commit for your good. God is always looking 